Good morning. Welcome to the 2016 Black and Canteen Ceremony. This morning, I'd like to introduce to you our honored guests, Council General and Mrs. Mrs. Usushi Musawa from the Japanese Consulate of Honolulu, Dr. and Mrs. Roya Sugano from Shizuoka, Japan, Mr. Sao Miwa, Board Chairman, Japan America Society of Hawaii, Ms. Carol Hawashino, President and Executive Director of the Japanese Cultural Center of Hawaii. Mr. Yoshiro Hirano, Director of Murubarakai. Mr. Shiro Wakita, former World War II Japanese Navy pilot. Colonel Jack Detour, former World War II Army Air Forces B-25 pilot. Please stand. Recognize. Thank you. Former World War II Army Air Forces P-51 pilot, Captain Jerry Yellen, escorted by Miss Bonnie Haynes. Miss Bonnie Haynes is the widow of Marine Corps Major General Fred Haynes and the director of the Iwo Jima Association. Our two active duty officers today are Colonel Kanai Tamakoshi, Japanese Air Civil De Self Defense Force, and our American representative, Major Don Wright, United States Air Force. Bishop Relkakan Ara from the Tendai Mission. Chaplain and Mrs. Robert Lawrence from Fall River, Massachusetts. Nicholas Bernice and the Dartmouth College Choir. The co-host for this event today is Superintendent Jacqueline Ashwell from the National Park Service and the Executive Director of the Pacific Aviation Museum, Pearl Harbor, Dr. Kent. Excuse me, sorry, I don't mean to doctor. Mr. Go. Ken DeHoff. <laughs> Mr. Ken DeHoff is our, uh, excuse me, Ms. Jacqueline <coughs> Ashwell will be our first speaker, superintendent. Japanese city of Shizuoka during a bombing mission. Both air crews were killed in the crash, and the raid killed 2,000 Japanese citizens. The loss of life, all life, is tragic. Fukumatsu Ito, a Japanese farmer, buried the crew members alongside the citizens of Shizuoka perished. He eventually built the Sengen Hill Monuments in hopes of promoting peace between the United States and Japan. It is out of this tragedy that we celebrate and commemorate life, all life, by observing this ceremony. This illustrates virtue. On behalf of the Department of the Interior, National Park Service, World War II, Valor and the Pacific National Monument, partnered with the Pacific Aviation Museum, we would like to welcome you to the 2016 Black Canteen Ceremony on the 
75th anniversary of the attack on Oahu. We are all here to remember those who lost their lives in that mid-air collision on that fateful day in 1945. But in a larger sense, we remember all of those who died during the Second World War. And we continue to live in the spirit for which this ceremony was created, in the spirit of peace, compassion, and reconciliation. Again, well. Our next speaker is Council General Basawa.
and also we are working the, uh, of some uh, project. But in the preparation point, I found that the Black Canteen's ceremony was very, very meaningful. That they picked up toward the new chapters. Uh, the days before yesterday, we got a very good news from Tokyo and Washington. Prime Minister Abe and President Obama will come here on 26 and 27 December and pay respect to those who lost their lives here. It will be a truly history-making visit, one to be remembered for decades to come, but I believe that such a big event could not be realized without a long-standing, passionate individual's efforts. Expressing my heartfelt thanks to all those who have contributed to realizing this grand and ceremony, and for all participants today, I would like to conclude my remarks. Thank you very much, and mahalo to you. I'd like to call to the podium at this time, Mr. Ken DeHoff, for his remarks. <coughs> to our dignitaries, our distinguished guests, visitors, and this magnificent choir behind me, aloha. Aloha. What a beautiful day here in Hawaii to have the opportunity to stand on this memorial and be able to share a story that is so touching to so many of us. The Black and Canteen ceremony began 71 years ago, now joins two nations with the hope of a world that will join together to seek peace on earth. 2016 marks the 44th year that Dr. Hiroya Sugano has shared the tragic story of two B-29s, a black and tan team, and the selfless acts of Mr. Fukumatsu Ito. Let me tell you a little bit about Dr. Sugano. He's dedicated his life to two noble causes saving lives as a physician specializing in the treatment of kidney disease and second pursuing everlasting peace and mutual understanding this message of love of fellow man peace reconciliation has reached thousands of people around the world through the annual ceremony both here and in Shizuzuko thinking of the younger generations so many of you that are here with a, maybe a questioning of why we do this to learn to communicate together to have the opportunity to not only use today's technology to share a message but to be able to take that message and communicate it to each other so that we never experience a crash like happened on June 20th, 1945, a war that was started December 7th, 1941, or events like I experienced in Vietnam, of where again, we had two nations that had a disagreement. We remind ourselves of the need to communicate peace and the understanding among all of us. We honor Dr. We honor to, we are honored to know Dr. and Mrs. Sagano as friends and proud to promote his good work at the Pacific Aviation Museum. The Black and Canteen has become a symbol of the horrors of war. For these past years, it represents the, the humanitarianism that resides in the hearts of the Japanese people. Public awareness of this trait has become, uh, has kept it alive through the retelling of 
the story of Mr. Otto and Dr. Sagano. Their dedication is a model for all mankind. The Black and Canteen Ceremony has become an important part of the annual December 7th commemoration program here at the Arizona Memorial and at the World War II Valor in the Pacific Monument. The National Park and the Pacific Aviation Museum have a mission very close to each other. To preserve history, to be, good, to be the guardians of artifacts, of knowledge, and places, so that the world can see them in a more pristine manner. Thank you, National Park, for what you do. We're honored to be partners with you. Today we're joined by three World War II pilots. There's a number of other pilots in here, and I want to thank you for joining us also. Let me tell you a little bit about these three pilots. Colonel Jack Detour began flying at 18. He joined the Army Air Corps upon graduating from high school in Portland, Oregon. He flew B-25s, did it in New Guinea, later in the Philippines and on to o Okinawa. And then Jack got out of the service, became a high school teacher and a coach until the Korean conflict started and he was recalled to active duty. When he flew the boxcar, the C-119, and he did that out of Japan also. This is his third year that he's participated in this ceremony. Jack, thank you. It's nice to see you. Captain Jerry Yellen also began flying at 18 when he enlisted as an aviation cadet in 1942. He graduated from fighter pilot school and then he moved here to Hawaii flying P-40s. He's one of the first that learned how to fly the P-51s and then escorted B-29 bombers from Guam and Iwo Jima into Japan. He flew the last combat mission of World War II, August 14, 1945, the day the war ended. Jerry's also a noted author. In 2008, he wrote the book Black and Canteen, which his ceremony is about. Jerry, thank you so much for being here. Mr. Shiro Wakita began flying at 18 or 17 also in a special <coughs> Imperial Japanese Naval Flight Program, Yokara. His flight training was not completed, however, when the war ended. So he returned to, civ to, civil, to civilian life in the travel industry, working many years to promote the Olympics and peace. He remained a member of the Unabarakai Association of Former Zero Pilots. Each of these men have stories that go much deeper than we're allowed to share. Dr. Sagano, we're honored to join you today. Thank you so much for being here again. Thank you, Ken. Thank you to our veterans that are here. It's my pleasure to now introduce the man that Ken talked about. I got to know him in 1992 for the first time. We were fresh from the 50th anniversary. The president had come and spoken words that he had no rancor in his heart. Perhaps a theme for this ceremony today. I want to recognize someone before I call Dr. Sagano up that deserves the credit for bringing this to us, and making us aware of what was then a difficult ceremony. The atmosphere of reconciliation was not as, let's say, bountiful as it is today. I've known John Di Virgilio for years. He opened up avenues of history to the Japanese aviation on that fateful day 
and to the Battle of Midway. He made me aware of the history that was right underneath my feet, had it translated so that I could pass it on, not only in articles, but talks that I gave. John, would you please stand and be recognized? Of course, there is Dr. Sagano. I know the light side of him and the heavy side of him, but I've never met a doctor who had an F-86 on his roof. <laughs> <laughs> he is a pleasant and wonderful man. I bring you Dr. Sagano and the Black and Canteen. Begin now the pouring ceremony. We ask that the following individuals will join Gary Myers, Colonel Myers, towards the dedication well. Dr. Sagano, Council General Masala, Mr. Wakita, Mr. Verano, Bishop Ara, Colonel Tomkoshi.
Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> tax.
all branches of the service. We gather in the name of whatever our God may be on this occasion. We gather in that spirit of unity and recognizing those who labor and keeping the symbolism of the Latin canteen within our consciousness that we can recall the power that brings us together on this occasion. As we observe the impression of the pilot's hand on this canteen, O oh Lord, we pray that your hands will make impressions on our spirit to unify our efforts into a brotherhood of humanity. May the impression of your hands in our lives motivate us to seek our common heritage that speaks of your love. And may the impression of your hands on our hearts find that power that surpasses all human understanding. And just as the flags of our two countries fly together at the memorial site on Sangin Hill, may they represent a lasting goodwill of friendship. <coughs> but like the canteen with its dents and its marks and its bruises, it survived because someone needed a lasting memory that should never be forgotten. These 71 years, O oh Lord, of its existence have provided a personal scars, wounds, and damage in many of our lives. But we too have survived because of your grace, O oh God. May the water of life, symbolized by the contents of this canteen, show us that life is eternal because of our love for peace. Indeed, O oh God, Shinosaki referred to the raid in which this canteen was recovered as a return to the dark age. But it's our prayer today, O oh God, that through the power of reconciliation, through the enlightenment and the worth of human life, and through the wisdom that proclaims the truth of a peace on earth, indeed, those days are now transformed into a new day in which the words ring true to love one another. So teach us, O oh God, that goodwill has no boundaries. And it is our prayer that this black and canteen always remain as a symbol of life. Keep the spirit of the peacemakers among us motivated in fulfilling your command that righteousness exalted a nation. May the Lord continue to bless those who were the victims of that fateful day in 1945, O oh God, so that we may through them turn any weakness that resorts to hate to do a strength that united, unites humankind, that in our sorrow and loss we find comfort that surpasses any misunderstandings, and that in our humanity we seek and find a resolution that will always bring peace. So may the Lord make his face to shine upon those that are assembled here today, that through their efforts we capture the meaning of the words that were spoken by Judy Sacano when she wrote, O oh Lord, to rejoice in our diversity, knowing that it is our greatest strength, and to strive unceasingly for one world united in harmony, peace, and surprise and prosperity. God love you. May the peace of all the things that I like we come to know and appreciate abide with us now and forevermore. Peace, shalom, and amen. Thank you, Reverend Lawrence. We ask uh, as these proceedings come to an end that those of you who have not had the opportunity to drop flower petals in uh, the well the USS Arizona Memorial so I'd like to thank Colonel Myers for his assistance and partnership on this ceremony. I thank each and every one of you for attending, getting up early, and celebrating this beautiful day here at Pearl Harbor. These proceedings are now closed.